Multi-row headers in Excel are really, really difficult to deal with. So here I've got my headers on three and four, both of those rows, and it really is limiting. For example, if I want to try and analyze this, then if I go to insert pivot table and press OK, it will tell me that I can't do it. Um, and if I want to manually do it, I need to add together to get project expenses, that row, that row, that row. Uh, they're just in different places and it's just going to cause all sorts of issues. So it's much better to have your data on one header row, but often, so, so often, people set it up like this. And it's not too easy to fix, uh, except that there is a hidden trick to do it in native Excel, and then there's Power Query from a more elaborate solution. So my name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. And I love doing tips and tricks like this, especially focusing on the new features, of which a hidden new feature is one I'm about to show you. I'm really excited for. So in the Home tab, you have Analyze Data. Analyze Data has been around for a few years. It allows you to ask a question about your data. It allows you to uh, give a summary of things like frequencies or trends or other things like that. Doesn't work well with this kind of data, but what it, it does do is give you the option to insert a pivot table. Now this isn't um, particularly exciting as it is. We saw that we can create a pivot table before, but here it's grouped together the project expenses um, and it's got variant and actual like that. Now, what's more interesting than this, though, is the tab that it's made called Transform Data. So here, it's actually managed to bring your headers into one row, like that. Look, I didn't do any formulas, no coding, no Power Query. It's done that for me. If I just expand them, we can see them. Account Program, Account Line, USD Actual Budget Variant Comments. Pretty good. I mean, that's pretty much what I would want if you'd think about it. And it's done that without me having to do very much at all. I've even seen issues situations where it's actually managed to fill down these and get these general operations, sales, etc., all the way like that, which is really, really useful. And read this in order to insert a suggestion that uses a pivot table or formula. Your data was organized in columns with a single header row, which is great. It's done that for me. But this is not always perfect and it's not always that flexible. So let's do this manually using Power Query. Um, in a way that is able to be refreshed automatically as well. But before we do that, we're going to give this data a name. So to do that, select it and click in the name box. Two RH, two row headers. And then we're going to go to data and from table range. And that is going to launch it. So what it's done is it's created a query with that same name and it's got source, promoted headers and changed type. Now. I'm going to delete these two. I actually don't like it when that happens. And I'm going to show you how to disable that later on. If you're doing a lot of power querying while you're doing these kind of elaborate transformations, then I do advise that. So once we've got here, we've got our headers on the two row, as we know, and then the rest is the data. Now, I'm first going to show you how to do it with a no code solution. Next, I'm going to show you how to do it with a code solution. And eventually, I'm even going to show you how to do it working on three row headers. And then if you don't want to learn this whole process, then you can just leave a comment on this video and then I can actually send you that file with this. So if we look at column one, I have the name that used to be the merge cell and then I've got nulls until the next one and then the nulls until the one after that. And my source data look kind of like this. Now I want to say that all of these roles relate to general operation, all of these to sales, etc. So what I can do is I can click on the column and I can choose transform fill down. I love that command, really, really useful. However, it doesn't exist for rows, only for columns. But if we do transpose, then we can end up using column level actions on rows and vice versa. I do that step in a lot of my videos because it's a easy non-code way of getting that to happen. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to first I uh, split out this table and then we're going to transpose it. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to choose reference. And I'm going to do that twice. So the first one I'm going to name uh, all data and the second one I'm going to name no headers. And the no headers one, I am going to just go to the home tab and choose remove top rows 
and, and type two, press OK. And I've got no headers, as the name implies. And in all data, I'm going to temporarily do the opposite. Keep top rows and keep just the two. I'm going to then add back these ones later on. But here, I'm going to do transpose, as we talked about earlier. So now, I can click on this, and I can choose fill down. And this is what we wanted. Now, this is going to say account line, USD actual, etc. So I can click on both of these, and I can choose transform merge columns. And separator, I can choose colon and space. We're going to leave the name as merged, press OK, and then we get it like this. Uh, and this is nice, except we don't want the comments to be like this. That's kind of useless. So we're going to fix that. And in this example, we're going to do the non-code way. And later on, I'm going to show you a more robust way that uses code. So add column, I'm going to choose column from examples. It's a great feature that uses AI to guess what you want to do. So account program, double click that or press enter. Press enter to lock it in. And then it just thinks that I want the exact same copy. That's not what I want. I want to delete this there. And now it thinks, well, maybe I want to take off certain aspects of everything, which I don't. So I fix this one, and now it does guess it correctly. Here is the code, which is quite complicated to decipher, but you can see that it is referring to a colon and space, which is what we want it to do. So I'm going to press OK, and now I have the second column. I'm going to right-click and remove other columns and just keep that one. Next, I'm going to transpose it back, and then... I'm going to go to the Home tab and append queries and with the no headers. Press OK. And then to get this back up, I will use first row as headers. And then it will do the change type automatically, like that. You probably do want to remove the total row as a final step. So click here and choose Remove Empty. That's the way that I recommend doing it. And now we've got it there. So we can click Close and Load. But what that's done is it's created three different worksheets. We actually don't need the no headers one that's useless to us, so I'm going to delete that. And we don't need 2RH either, so I'm going to delete that one as well. We do need this one, and we're going to keep that. So I'm going to go through some quick settings that I recommend, get data and query options. To avoid that, if you go to data load, you tick this one, specify custom, and you untick both. That way, it doesn't load by default, and you can choose to only load the one that you want. And I also recommend this one, never detect column types and headers for unstructured sources. It avoids doing the promoted headers and change types, um, which if you're getting to advanced Power Query stages, is much better. Also in the editor, make sure these two are ticked, the formula bar and the query settings pane, uh, because we're going to do another example that's going to go a little bit further. So in the 3 and unpivot tab, firstly, I've got just a demo of where you have two rows for headers and you want to unpivot it. And here we've got Cambodia order cost, Laos order cost, Malaysia order cost. And this is the better way to do that kind of data set. I have another video where I talk about how to unpivot. I absolutely love unpivoting and really recommend you learn it as well. So we're going to do it on this one and we're going to select it. And here I've already given it a name, so I'm just going to be able to go from table or range which actually covers from a table. So here it's loading it up like this, header rows number two. Um, I'm going to minimize that. We're actually going to do everything in this one query using some custom code. So firstly, I'm going to start as before, remove top rows. And we actually have our headers technically on the first four rows, even though the fourth one is not very useful. So I'm going to say the first four, and I'm going to do keep the top rows and keep the first four. So remove and then keep four. Obviously, this doesn't make any sense. Um, but what you can do here is you can choose to bypass the remove top row step and refer to an earlier step. And that means that it's going to keep the first four rows from the beginning. And this one will be a sort of keep it for later step. So the keep first rows, if I go in the formula tab, which you should see if you did the settings that I showed you earlier. Here we're going to change that for source, press tab to lock that in, press enter, and now we get our four header rows. Next part is the same as before, transform, transpose. First two here we're going to 
click and fill down and then select the first three and we're going to merge the columns. Press OK. We actually don't need column four as I explained before, this is just the instructions. So I'm going to delete that. And then here for this one, we're going to clean these up. As you can see, we have this is showing twice here as well. Um, and sometimes it's showing at the end, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is first we're going to click on the first one and choose replace values. And that pops up with this pre-populated backspace, backspace. And then we want to change that with colon and space. So we get rid of the doubles, but we're still left with the ones at the end. So to fix those, what we're going to do is we're not going to use the column from examples tab this time. I've already tried with this and it doesn't work. We're going to instead do it with custom code, but we're going to build the code steps using the user interface and then combine them as we go along. So I'm going to go to add column and choose a conditional column. And I'm going to say if merged begins with, uh, sorry, ends with colon and space, then I'm going to type in changed. Otherwise, I'm going to choose the merge column like this. So you can see these four instances of why we do want it to change. Click back on merged and I'm going to go to extract the length and then I'm going to click back on merge and go to extract and choose first characters and we're just going to choose three here. It's just an arbitrary number as you'll see. So now we've got these three extra steps on the applied steps here. Uh, we're going to go to text length and we're going to click on this. This is the edit cog. So this is the actual formula that it's got, equals text.length slash merged. I'm just going to copy that and insert it first characters. I can go to where it says three and I can just paste. So I'm replacing it with, it's going to be, how long is it going to be? It's going to be the length of the text. Press enter. That is the same as this, which seems useless until I enter minus two. So now it's everything except the last two characters, which is getting somewhere. Next, we wanna say, well, if this equates to change, then return everything except the last two, otherwise return everything. So I'm gonna go by clicking here, and same as before, I'm going to copy. If there's a space there or not, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna to go to add a conditional column, and then in the if then, I'm gonna swap changed with paste, press enter, and now I have exactly what I want. So I can delete these two steps because we don't need them anymore. They were just to help us build it. Right click, remove other columns, and then transform, transpose again. And then we're going to bring in what we removed, which is this. But to do that, we're going to do a similar thing of creating an append queries and then we're going to add it on. So I'm going to go to, in the home tab, I'm going to choose append queries and I'm going to choose an arbitrary table. Let's go with this one, for example. It's just going to show me null values, but that doesn't matter. We're just doing it for a placeholder so we get the code. And then here uh, we can see it's table.combine and then open our brackets, the curly brackets. Then we get the previous step, comma, and then the name of the other table. What we need to do is we need to switch this with removed top rows, which is the name of the table as it was at this stage. Press enter. And then we have our table. Use first row as headers. And then here it hasn't automatically changed the data types, but you can select the ones that you need to, kind of like that. And then you can choose transform and detect data type probably want the date to not include the time like that. Replace current. There we go. So now we've got pretty much our data as we want it to be with a single row for headers. Uh, of course, you can clean this up in any way that you want. And when you're done, you can close and load. Close and load will just give it to you like this with connection only. Right click and load to 
to get it to a table in a new worksheet like this. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, then my name was David Benayim, and I have tons more videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel, and I'm doing weekly videos on this kind of content, focusing on a lot of the new stuff, like what we covered earlier with the analyzed data. The fact that that can transform the table for you is not only new, but it's so, 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 so hidden. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.